So good evening, folks. Once again, um, massive shout out to everyone listening on the audio experience, everybody watching on YouTube, on the replay. You guys who are here tonight are awesome. Fanny's here, Wendy's here, Richard's here, Sophia's here, Ethan's here, Dawn's here, Wendy's here, Indra's here, Jenna's here, Ricky's here, uh, Bess is here. All right, Bess, Steph, Lacey. She calls herself Bess, sometimes Steph, because um, I think she had a Facebook stalker, so she had to change her name. All right, Bess, Steph, whatever your name is. Uh, Lynn's in the house as well. All right, Lynn, how are you doing? Um, let me know what you've been doing. It's bank holiday. Let me know what's been going on. On. Has anybody, I bet you've not had time, I get it because it's bank holiday. I sent an email out to everyone this morning about a brand new premium podcast I put up on ads on this TV this morning um, with probably the most famous voiceover artist in the UK, if not most of the world, a guy called Peter Dixon. You'll know him as the voice of the X Factor and Britain's Got Talent. You know him as a guy who says people's names like Alexandra Buck. Um, that guy, you know, it's time to face, I can't do it, the music. Um, Awesome, awesome guy. One of the most in-demand voiceover artists in the country. I did a podcast with him. I recorded it last week. It's gone up on the site this morning. I filmed a behind-the-scenes vlog that if people on here haven't seen yet, I'm tempted just to play it out on here so you guys watch it because now I've got you as an audience. I want you to watch it because I think it's really going to get you excited about the world of voiceover. Um, I got into voiceover 15 years ago. It completely changed my life. I mean it in so many ways. A lot of actors think voiceover is something you do on the side. I think that's absolute bullshit. They think it's like a second string to the bow. Voiceover is like a joint first string to my bow. It's something that um, I do an awful lot in. Uh, this, you know, tomorrow I'm going to voice a national commercial for a really well-known pet um, company, like a pet brand. Um, I've got to be a wrapping dog in that. You're going to see that on your TV soon. That's pretty hilarious. Um, I've got a couple of the jobs this week on Wednesday. Ultimately. Um, just because I know this would have piqued my interest when I was doing a job that I hated. The job that I hated back in the day, my day job before, you know, I got into this and it, it helped me escape from a day job. You know, basically what I'm going to make this week, um, and I hate talking about money because it's quite crude and it's not about the money at all, but money is, is freedom in this game in terms of the amount of time you then have to focus on your acting career. Probably would have took me five months to make working in that job that I hated in the traffic centre in retail. It's actually going to take me three hours this week um, to do that. And that isn't, oh, look at me, look at me. That's just the sort of language that I, I would have resonated with me when I was doing the thing that I hated. And, you know, that's the reality of this industry. If you focus on it and you really knuckle down and you get good at it, um, because there's nothing extraordinary about my voice, I just know how to use it in a voiceover setting, you know, in terms of actually how to deliver a read. Um, and there's an awful lot of technique. It's not something that you just, you know, I've taken great actors in, uh, into the voiceover booth, and I mean really great actors, and they've really underestimated what voiceover is, and they've been absolutely terrible at it. It's not just, you know, you can't just go, I've got, oh, I've got a nice telephone voice, so I'm going to be good at voiceover. There's so much technique involved with it, and it's nothing to do with acting. There is a lot in terms of what your acting career will bring to voiceover. For most people, that's, you know, lack of inhibition. That's confidence when they walk into a room. Um, that's an ability to, you know, just try stuff out. Uh, maybe you've, you know, you have accents under your belt, although they're not, they're absolutely not required a lot of the time in voiceover unless you're doing animation. Um, then you'll be asked to maybe play multiple characters with different accents. It can be quite useful to have accents then. Uh, but it ultimately transformed my life. And I thought, who better to sit down and record a podcast with um, than Peter Dixon? You might never have seen Peter Dixon's face. Let me put a uh, let me put a, a face to the name for you and a face to the voice. If you go to atsonthis.tv, this is the homepage where you'll see loads of the you know, features that are going on there right now where you can get your membership if you've not got one. If you click on what's new at the top there, you see all of the latest podcasts that I've recorded. There's the man himself. Look at that, Mr. Peter Dixon. Um, how to land voiceover work, basically, with Voice of the X Factor. Peter Dixon, he's not just the voice of the X Factor, though. He's not just the voice of Britain's Got Talent. This guy has like recorded over 250 TV shows over the last 43 years. He's one of the most in-demand voiceover artists um, that there are. So he really, really knows what he's talking about. And we sat down and we discussed for 90 minutes this industry, what you should do if you're an actor looking to get into this. Peter also runs one of the, well, actually the largest voiceover training company in the world with his business partner, Hugh Edwards, called Gravy for the Brain. If you're an Acts on This member... Your membership for acts on this, right? Check this out, right? It's a tenner a month. It's freaking dirt cheap. It's £2.50 a week. You get access to hundreds worth of, you know, hundreds of hours worth of fantastic interviews with the biggest names in the business. If you click into the members area here, I'll show you. So I'll put something new up. If you click into premium membership there, go down to the bottom. Can you see that? You might not be able to see it if you're on your phone, but there's a little black uh, category at the bottom that says acting resources and discounts. If you click into that, 
you'll see at the bottom there, it says save on voiceover training with Gravy for the Brain. I've got the guys at Gravy for the Brain to offer 25% discount to act on this premium members. So if you're paying 10 quid a month for your premium membership and you want to get voiceover training at Gravy for the Brain, the biggest and best resource for voiceover training on the planet, um, you will save that 10 pounds a month on you know with your discount to grow for the brain so effectively your ads on this membership is costing you absolutely nothing so if you already have a membership to grow for the brain cancel it subscribe to ads on this and then get your discount code and effectively you're going to get ads on this completely for free that will get you access to literally hundreds of hours worth of interviews with the biggest casting directors agents actors writers producers in the industry um, so it's uh, it's well worth doing. Just another perk of, uh, of being a member, basically. So let me jump back on camera. Who's should, should I play the vlog? Tony Rossi, how are you doing, my man? All the way from Chicago. Uh, Peter Dixon, legendary guy, says Donna. He is an absolute total ledge. Honestly, so good. Hope you'll be speaking at the conference in Newcastle, Ross. Yes, I've got that email, Dawn. I'm probably, well, I'd love to speak at this conference. I'll tell you guys about that another time. I'm going to be speaking at a conference on emotional intelligence in I think it's October, isn't it, Dawn? A friend of Dawn. Simon Barton in the house. All right, Si, I hope you're well. Um, so who's seen the vlog? Should I play it? Because it's really entertaining, but it's super, super valuable for you guys. And then if you want to listen to the full 90-minute chat with Peter, then you can go you know, check out ads on this if you've already got a membership. Or just go and freaking get one. Bobby Calloway in the house as well. Give me some comments. I'm guessing it's bank holiday, so you've not had many, you know, much time to watch it today. I would love to play it out for you guys if you'd be happy with that. And then we'll do maybe like half an hour of Q&A on voiceover, expand on what we've spoken about in the vlog. And we'll just, you know, I just want to get you guys into this industry. It's certainly not. I don't want to sell it as a get-rich-quick thing, right? It isn't. It's took me 15 years to get to this level um, where I'm working as much as I'm, I'm working and, you know, bringing in what I'm bringing in. Um, but it, because the internet has revolutionized, well, just the whole industry, Honest to God, if you are prepared to put the work in and you've got a laptop and a decent microphone, there's really nothing stopping you having a really, really decent career in voiceover, you know, bar the amount of work you're prepared to put in. If you're going to be lazy and you can't be arsed and you expect just, you know, just to walk in and get paid thousands of pounds to speak, you're having a laugh. Uh, but if you are prepared to take it as seriously as you are, you're acting training, seriously, it can change your life. I, it, it was the thing that very quickly within 12 months got me out of my day job. And then, I mean, that was massive. I ended up working, what did I end up working? 10 times less the hours for four times the money. So I ended up having, I would work maybe four hours a week opposed to 40 and get paid four times as much as I was getting paid when I was doing 40 hours a week because I really, really dedicated myself to it. Bernard's here, great for the brain, it's amazing. Do not sign up, I have enough conversation already. <laughs> Bernard doesn't want anybody to sign up. But yeah, well, get yourself, um, Bernard, if you've not got, I don't know how much you're paying for your subscription. Um, if, yeah, I mean, check if it's, well, I don't know if you're paying full price for it, um, ads on this members, get it cheaper. So let me know, send me a message, let me know how much you're paying. I'll tell you if you can get it cheaper by getting ads on this membership. But the discount code is in the members area. Obviously, I can't give that out to people who aren't members of ads on this. It's just an exclusive for those guys. Um, but do let me uh, do let me know. Um, watch half of the podcast, says Bobby. Well, you know what, right, sod it. I'm going to play it, yeah. I'm going to play the vlog, okay? This is just 20-odd minutes, but you're going to see me... Well, you're going to see some exclusive stuff from Peter as well that isn't in the podcast, so it's well worth, uh, well worth watching. Um, I'll play you guys this now. I can still see your comments as we're playing this out. Obviously, I'm not going to be on camera. Please, if you get any questions that come up as we're talking, you know, on this uh, on this vlog, um, then please leave them in the comments on Facebook, and I'll answer them, you know, as soon as we uh, we finish with this. But yeah, um, I'll play this now, and I'll keep an eye on the comments. I'll see you guys after this episode. All right, see you soon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another act on this premium podcast with Ross Grant and me. Peter Dixon, voiceover man. Everybody to episode 52 of Watch Ross, the one where I teach you how to get into voiceover. Nice. Ready.
recognize that voice, do you? I bet you do. Well, after today's vlog, you're going to be able to put a face to it. Me and Petra are on our way down to London to record a podcast for ActsOnThis.tv with the most famous voiceover artist in the country, if not the world, bar me, Mr. Peter Dixon. You'll know him as the voice of the X Factor, Britain's Got Talent. He also works extensively throughout all other areas of the voiceover industry. And he also runs the largest online voiceover training company on the planet as well, Gravy for the Brain. Check out ActsOnThis.tv forward slash gravy to find out how I'm going to be working with Peter and to bring you guys really like some awesome, awesome voiceover training over the next couple of months. We're going to be talking about voiceover, how it's affected my life, it's impacted my life massively, been in this industry 15 years, transformed my career really. It's obviously had a huge impact on Peter's life as well. Um, so yeah, you're going to want to stick around. Really, we're going to be looking at how you guys can get yourselves a piece of this $4.4 billion industry. Before that patch, I definitely need a brew. How do you get down here? Mate, to the underground. And now, to the studio. Petch, look at all these, right? Look, we're in, we're in Hackenbacker Studios. Peter's, like, mate owns it, I think. He's well up. BAFTA's galore on here. Um, and we're just waiting for him. He's in the studio doing something. Is he here? Peter, come out. I think he's here. Peter Dixon, oh, welcome to the vlog. Here, we're just looking at all the, all the BAFTAs. Yes. There's yes. absolutely of shed course, loads. This studio is, uh, is Hackenbacker, which, which is where they make all these wonderful, well, film dubbing. They do the dubbing for the films and also for big TV pr productions as well, big dramas. It's, uh, and they won all these awards. I mean, the guy that works in this studio we're going to is a guy called uh, Nigel Heath, and he's... You know, Shout out Nigel. Nigel is... This is Petch, by the way. Petch is filming us today. Hi, Petch. <laughs> all right, Petch. Does he look like that all the time? All the time. No, no one ever sees him. No, they do, they do see him now and again on the vlog. Yeah. Petch is here. He's um, like a pet, isn't he? He's like a pet. <laughs> That's why we call him Petch. He's like a little pet. Um, he's mad on Spider-Man and he's really upset this week because he's seen Endgame, the final Marvel film. Oh, yeah. And that's uh, game over for you, mate, isn't it? No spoilers. No spoilers. Biggest grossing film of all time. Yeah, I know, I just heard that this morning. Over, uh, well, a this, billion, over a billion. This is going to be the biggest grossing podcast of all time. And um, Peter, we're going to go in the studio, mm. we're going to record a podcast on voiceover, obviously. We're going to help the viewers ultimately voiceover. Yeah. I just said on the train, it's changed my life. It's obviously changed your life massively. We're going to help these guys with some practical, actionable, actionable advice mm. on what they can do to start, you know, maybe exploring this as a, uh, yes. as a viable option yes. for a career. Um, excited about it? I'm super excited. Can't wait to get started. He can't wait. Pitch, can you wait? Can't wait. Peter, you know what time it is. It's time to start the podcast. I'm going to test your sight reading now. <laughs> oh god. Because people are going to be going, his voice is familiar, but I'm going to give you this. Don't over don't don't look it over too much. Don't over uh, overanalyze it. Read it straight off in voiceover man's voice. You'll definitely okay. recognise this Here now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Act On This premium podcast with Ross Grant and me, Peter Dixon, voiceover man. Sit tight and keep listening, because this is going to be the best podcast I've ever recorded. Get in. Boom. Look at that. There you go. The most... Well, let's say like the most recognisable voice in the country, um, bar mine. Um, you'll know exactly who this guy is now. Obviously, voice of the X Factor, voice of um, Britain's Got Talent. But you know what, Peter? Like, I think a lot of people are going to be thinking that that's all you do. I know you do an absolute shed load more than that, both in and well in the voiceover industry on other projects, not just TV, mm. um, but also, and we're going to talk about this a lot in today's podcast as well. You run the largest online voiceover training company on the planet, Gravy for the Brain. That's uh, right. Yeah, I do. Uh, along with Hugh Edwards, my business partner, we uh, we do that. Yeah, and and as you rightly say, I've been in the business forty years. Um, well, forty three years now. Uh, I started unbelievably when I was just seventeen years old. You know, I was just barely out of short trousers, and I <laughs> the arrogance of youth. You know, I rang the BBC up one day uh, because I'd always wanted to be a radio announcer. Bizarre right, okay. for a young man, isn't it? I mean, it's a strange thing to want to do. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but um, you probably 
you've probably met a few of them, but people that work in broadcasting are generally quite strange anyway. I think I belong in that camp very firmly. Um, I I had this desire as a young child to to, to, be, to record my voice, to speak and on the radio. I don't know where that came from. Maybe it was because I'd heard some voices that coming out of my father's radio set when I was maybe five or six, and I remember hearing these wonderful fruity voices from the BBC uh, emanating from this radio set. And um, I just thought, I want, to, I want to do that. And so when I got, got to the age of 17, I'd just left school. I just about to leave school, actually. I rang the BBC up and I said, uh, have you got any jobs going? Nice. And they, they invited me down. I was so, I was equally, I was horrified and at the same time excited. But I went down to the BBC and met this man who was the head of the presentation department. He said, can you just read this? Rather like you just did with yep. me. I had no pre-warning. He said, read that. And it was a news bulletin or a, a few stories from a, a BBC news bulletin. I read it uh, on, on mic and he recorded it and said, thank you very much. We'll be in touch. And uh, literally three days later, my mother took a call at, at our house saying, can, can I start on the Monday? Wow. Um, and this was just as I was about to go to university. So I, while, I, while I did my four-year degree, I was going back and forth to the BBC doing shifts, you know, in the even, mainly in the evening, some day shifts, where I was, you know, reading news and doing little programs and things. So I, that was my... Um, really early introduction into into radio and into working on mic. So I've been working in voice over like 15 years. It completely changed my life. Um, probably not to the extent it's changed your life. I'm definitely not as recognisable as you, but it's definitely had a it's had a huge impact financially. It enabled me to give up my day job, enabled me to have more time to yeah. audition as an actor. Massive, massive impact. The the industry is estimated to be worth four point four billion dollars a year. Incredible, you know, incredible amount of money. Um, I want to help the people listening to this get a little, you know, maybe yes. get excited about getting a piece of that action, and we'll give them some practical, actionable steps, um, you know, that they can they can use and you know take from this podcast. Yeah. Over the last decade, I've seen the internet revolutionise the way the voiceover industry operates, and as technology has improved and gotten cheaper, the industry has become kind of more accessible for everybody in a way. And to be honest, if you've got a MacBook and a decent microphone and the talent, right, that's that's definitely yes. oh, necessary. Yes. Yes. Um, you have got everything you kind of need to succeed in this industry. The one ingredient you can't pick up on the shelf at an Apple store, though, is that talent, right? So we want to chat about that to begin with. What, in your opinion, makes a good voiceover artist? And what skills would you suggest the actors listening to this, you know, look at developing? And I'm talking, like, way before they even think of trying, you know, to yeah. produce, like, you know, a demo or look for paid work. There's got to be a lot of groundwork, I think. Oh, the demo and the paid work come very much further down the line. But the good news is, for, for, for those who are listening to this who are actors, who have undertaken acting training perhaps, or they've had experience of acting in repertory theatre or in, in wherever, you know, uh, most of your our listeners now will have had that experience. The good news is that that's literally three-fifths of the... You've got most of what you need already. Yeah. You've got the, the ability to adapt and, and to, to, to change your voice, to do different characters, to, to, to um, uh, make your performance real. So you know all about that stuff. We don't have to teach you that. So what we need to teach you, what you need to learn, is the the etiquette of how to how the, the voiceover industry works, how to uh, perform on mic, how to technically record yourself, um, how to get the work in the first place. You know how to uh, approach an agent, perhaps how to get uh, uh, an audition reel done or reels done. Um, Working out what areas of voiceover you're particularly interested in, because there are many yeah, genres, loads. Um, you know, from explainer videos to um, ADR to uh, animation, commercials. You know, you name it. Uh, there are literally as many um, genres in voiceover as there are months in the year. You know, so you you can be very specific if you want to, or you can be very general. I took the decision many years ago to be quite a generalist. You know, I'm probably. Um, uh, a jack of all trades a little bit but i um, i'm very glad i did take that decision because what you find is in this industry is that you know you can be the top of the the, the staircase one minute in say promo or advertising commercials it's fickle and isn't then the it? next next yeah, <laughs> the next year you know your takings your income from that particular genre or that area has literally dived below the surface never to be seen again so what do you think of the core the core competencies that these people should be looking at developing then in terms of i don't know sight reading um, diction like you know yeah. understanding the audience they're reading the script to and that kind of stuff well, all good communication, and I'm talking about everything to do with voiceover now, that's from corporate to commercial to audiobooks, all good communication relies 
uh, on connecting with another person at an emotional level. I'll often get a script, literally like on arrival. I very, very rarely get a script, you know, in advance. You never get to see it. That's the other thing that, that most actors find difficult about voiceover is because, you know, when you go for a part, you've got the, the text to work for, work with for maybe weeks or months beforehand. You can do all your character um, uh, investigation and practice on mic if you want to or in front of a mirror. But here, um, as you say, you very often either, uh, if you're working at home, they'll email, email you the script and expect it back like that you know or you'll get an audition you have to do it right away or if you're coming into a big city market like London and you're going to a studio like this one we're in now yeah uh, they'll just say um, okay there's the there's the script you you know uh, go into the booth and read it off you go and uh, yeah and and even you know that's for commercials and, and particularly for um, maybe um, you know uh, gaming I mean I do a lot of gaming work and you, you'll uh, go in on a Monday morning at 10 a.m. and the director will say well there's the script and it's literally a sheaf of papers that thick which which is literally just a pages and pages of Excel spreadsheet with each cell filled with maybe one two three or twelve line yep. lines um, and you're just re reading these lines completely out of context uh, it's very very uh, important to focus and be um, to concentrate and to have that sight reading ability in order to do that you've got to literally switch into uh, the character and know exactly your purpose as we spoke about earlier why you're there what your what's happened beforehand in the scene what's going to happen next what your emotional state is you could ask all those questions and these are all the little tips and tricks and techniques we teach at gravy for the brain because nobody teaches this at gram at um, at uh, you know at acting school no my, i went to one of the you know one of the best drama schools in the country apparently didn't do any of this like no, not no. we didn't do even any tv training we just looked at theater for That's 3 right. years threw you out into the world and went go on go make a living for yourself and i was like well you've actually like <laughs> you told me nothing about how I'm going to make, well, make we, money with these skills. Gravy for the Brain, our very first course was actually um, uh, the gaming course, which is still one of our most popular ones right, okay. online. We, we actually teach it. Or we, we, we haven't done one for a while, but we, we should probably do another one. Right in this studio right here. Um, and we teach... Um, Hugh came up with the idea because uh, as a gaming director, he, was, he found himself having to train actors uh, in front of clients. Yep. And that's not ideal yep. because it looks bad. So he thought, well... I'm using all the same small pool of people all the time because they know how to do it, but I want to use so many more, more actors. people, yeah, yeah. of course. So we, 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 we trained, I think we've trained about uh, 2,000 actors now in, in gaming and about 42,000 actors around the world in all the other aspects of voiceover. So, you know, it's a, it's a, obviously there's a great need for it. Yeah, I, uh, I'm coming on one of those. I've not done enough computer games. I did... Um... I did Harry, you did Harry Potter, didn't you? Yeah, did totally Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the Harry Potter. That was quite a while ago on PlayStation. That though used to do. There was a game called Buzz on PlayStation. It was a quiz game. Jason Donovan was the quiz host, <laughs> and I would answer the questions. I would ask the questions. Um, that was crazy. But yeah, gaming like massive now. It's I mean, huge. and the budgets are huge too. Not necessarily for the actors because they tend to want to do buyouts on those on those those games. But um, if you get a good if you've got a good part with a lot of lines and you're in the studio for quite a few hours, you know you can make a tidy sum of money doing gaming. I I've taken a lot of actors, and I mean some seriously, like household names, into the studio, and they've been rubbish at voiceover. They think, I think there's a thing where actors think just because they can act, they, you know, voiceover is almost not as hard as like, you know, yeah. walking and talking, you know, acting. Oh, well, that can't be as hard as sitting in the studio <laughs> and just talking. Um, you do, I think, like, I agree with you what you said before. They have the skills, or they have at least a basis of the skills yeah. um, required. But have you, I mean, what's your experience been of that? Have you taken people in who, who are overconfident and then you put them in front of the mic and they go, oh, actually, this is a lot harder than I thought because even breathing, you know, see in it the all right the time. Places. Yeah, I see it all the time. We teach a technique called inhale, uh, inhale, uh, pause, frame, deliver, and what that basically means is you can imagine a poor en uh, recording engineer recording your voiceover, <clears throat> and um, what people tend to do is when they take a script, they'll go like this. Welcome to another. Do you see what I did yep. there? Now that noise has to be edited off and sometimes you can't edit it off and it drives the engineers and producers mad so we it's something that you wouldn't necessarily know about as an actor yep. unless you knew that you that we teach you to inhale pause, pause. frame deliver inhale obviously filling the the tank yep um uh, you pause to give that little bit of dead air and you frame your mouth into the shape of the first syllable that you're going to say in the case of this script it was welcome so i'd be 
whoa, whoa, whoa. I'd have that yep. shape ready. <laughs> and, then I, and then I deliver. So it's inhale, pause, frame, deliver. Now, these are little techniques, and there are thousands of these techniques we teach all the time to people. And they think, oh, yeah, I never thought of that. I never yep. knew that I needed to do that. The amount of people breathing in, in words, they'll take a breath within a word. I'm like, I, oh, can't, can't, no. I can't cut that out. Like, you no. know, and, they, and they just can't do it. Where did that announcer voice kind of come from? And how did, how did like, Simon Cowell and the people at Ace Factor, like, even discover it? Well, I was uh, working on Steve Wright's show on Radio 1 for a number of years, uh, and we I, I, I worked as one of his posse. We used to create voice characters, te- oh, okay. telephone characters. You right. Know. And I remember uh, one of the characters that we came up with for that show was uh, uh, when he was on The Breakfast Show was a character called VoiceOver Man. Because I was kind of doing voiceovers at that time anyway, <laughs> and uh, I thought it'd be quite fun to have a voiceover man character who spoke like a voiceover man all the time. All the time. Brilliant. That's right. Yeah, love it. <laughs> and there's a bouncy castle for the kids right off the ring road. You know, that sort of voice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which um, at the time was, and still is sadly, still required, <laughs> requested by commercial voiceover producers in, in, in radio, uh, but more so these days as a kind of a pastiche rather than as a any genuine sort yeah. of desire to sound like that. Anyway, so uh, I uh, that's where voiceover man came from. And then when the X Factor came along, uh, I auditioned for it along with a, lo- a, lo- a load of other people. And I remember thinking that, uh, having seen the pilot show, that this um, show really demanded a big kind of voice, uh, much bigger, in fact, than the voice of a man character I'd done on Radio One. Uh, so I just took that the, the the basis, the tonality of that character, and then just multiplied it by a hundred, right? And and then gave gave it more bass and came up with this um, ridiculous stentorian kind of pompous rather over the top style and every year you know Simon Cowell used to say well, we want to see it bigger and bigger bigger and, and I always say to people you know by year, by season 10 I was bleeding like a Bond villain from my eyeballs <laughs> I made a mistake starting I'm sure you did yeah. what do you think let's give them three things to go right do this this and this and then a fourth one is definitely sign up for Grave for the Brain and get some real training what's the first thing is get some training yeah that's the first one actually <laughs> get some you know, seriously no yeah. that really there's a if you if you join Grave for the Brain I think you've got a you've got a, a, a promo code I've or got something. A, yeah 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 absolutely We'll give give some we'll give some decent discount to your listeners, of course, and we'll give them lots of love. You can join for a month and and then turn it off and go away and come back six months later. You still get the same deal. So it's, a, it's not like you're tied in for a year. Yeah, there's no penalty exactly to the leave. Same as that's on this. Yeah, yeah. We, we're a, and I think when Hugh and I sat down and created Gravy for the Brain, we said we're going to make a, an extremely ethical company. We're not going to rip people off. We're going to give them fantastic value for money. When you go in there, you'll see what's in there. You won't you won't believe it. It's amazing. The library is incredible. I was scrolling through it yesterday, and well, I couldn't get through it to be honest because there was just pages and pages and it's pages amazing. of webinars and it's podcasts. all indexable and searchable. So if you want to find out about uh, voice booths, you just type in voice booths. It'll show you every single uh, element in on our platform that deals with how to create your own home studio, say, and you can find out how to do that. It's very easy to do. Um, but there's literally, it's a, you know, I hate to sort of, I, I, we, we're not a very selly business. We don't sell, we don't have to sell it because it, when you see what we've got, people just say, yeah, I get it. I'll, that's great. I'm in. Yeah. Um, so we don't we don't do any hard sell, and there's no upselling either inside. So once you pay your monthly subscription, um, it's a bit like Netflix. You know, you pay your monthly subscription, you get everything, absolutely everything we do forever, provided you you remember. Exactly the same model that I run. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I talk just to check out Gravy for the Brain before I met you and Hugh. Um, you just did a, a voiceover for beginners course. Yeah. And that in itself, you know, was so in depth and the little quizzes you could do in there. And I actually, you know, from I was I've been doing this at that point, probably twelve years. I took away stuff from that. Do you know one thing I took away? Posture. And I'm not doing it now. Um I should be, but in terms of sitting, you, yeah. you and Hugh go through sitting on the edge mm. of the chair, one knee kind of out, and you, you can look at all this on the uh, on the site, guys. I know this is audio; you're not going to see me right now. Um, but I was like, well, you, oh know my God. Why, you know why the posture is important? Well, it's like that the diaphragm. diaphragm. Yeah, because if you're sitting the way we are now, we're on a casual conversation basis. So I'm not performing, and that's fine. But if I were going to be doing this as a as a, as a performance of, as a voiceover, I'd sit like that. Yeah. So my back's nice and straight. So that replicates the same shape in my torso as when I'm standing. Yep. And so I can give my diaphragm the chance to, to move and to give my breath the ability to um, to work as, as well as it can 
and and give you that control. Webinars, right, we're going to be hosting, for those listening, we're going to be hosting some exclusive webinars for Acts on This um, and in conjunction with Gravy for the Brain over the next couple of months. Now, I don't know when you're going to listen to this podcast. This might be way down the line. Don't worry, you're still going to get access to the replays of those. We're actually going to be hosting a webinar, Peter, called Actors. I mean, this is a bloody great title. Actors, this is how you get voiceover work. I mean... <laughs> well, it's just it's what it says on the tin. Exactly. You know, that's it. Um, if you get yourself over to actonthis.tv forward slash gravy for details of those... Um, um, or you can watch the replays, like I say, you know, if you've missed them. Uh, we're also going to be giving that discount away. The discount code um, for those listening is... So there you go. You just saw a few clips of the podcast me and Peter have just done. Um, Peter, it was just, like, just an awesome, awesome chat. You enjoy that? What? I did. I was great. I loved it. Uh, it, it just gets paid sort for a living, so do I, so we can probably just talk and talk and talk. Uh, but I hope it's inspired people to you know look at this industry you know and and really yeah just stop you know actors who want to get into voiceover just stop procrastinating there are so many things um hopefully you've taken from that podcast that you can start acting up on so this is called acts on this the whole website that i run um there was two things that came up for me in that i want to just expand on for five minutes first thing peter was again it goes back to what i just said how much control i think actors have over their careers if they just realize it they're not at the mercy of casting directors all the time. There is things that they can do themselves. You told a great story about 15 years ago, you made a phone call to a company going, listen, you probably need voiceover. Yeah. Um, I'm a voiceover artist. Anything that you need me to do? And they gave you a contract for Cineworld, a massive cinema chain, for 15 years. Just like, what what have you got to say in terms of just taking action? And you said about being a self-starter. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, you've, I don't want to reprise it all, but, you know, it's very, very um, simple. You don't sit at home waiting for the phone to ring because it won't ring. You've yeah. got to actually get out there and do stuff. And as Nicholas Talim said, you know, go out and go to more parties, meet more people, make those connections with other voice artists and with producers and directors, meet them socially. Um, this is a people business. It's all about trust. Uh, and so if put your, I always say to people, put yourself in the shoes of the people who are employing you and then that way you will understand what you have to do so in other words uh if you are um a producer and director and you've uh, written this great commercial and you're at the point where you're about to do the voiceover you know there's been maybe months of work has gone into getting to that point there's been the client lunches there's wooing the client there's agreeing the fees there's shooting the commercial there's they probably had a crew go to south africa to film they film a lot out there or the caribbean or wherever they've gone but there's been huge expense to get to that one singular point in the day where it's down to you to put the, pol the polishing touch onto it and you know they're not going to employ you unless they actually trust you. And and you, as soon as I walk into that room, they, I want them to. I want to see the, them all go. Ah, he's here. We don't have to worry about it now. And that's the point you need to get to. And to get to that point, you have to get to know people. You know, they have to trust you. You have to build your reputation. Yeah. That's the very important thing. So when somebody entrusts their project to you whether it's a small commercial a big commercial an audiobook an animation whatever it is that when you walk into the room they should go ah, yeah. thank god he's here you know and and that's that's really where you want to be so trust is important and trust is gained through um you know practice and by by turning up and just showing up at the right time and not farting in the studio yeah <laughs> Definitely. That's the last, the last thing we want. Um, it's, oh, it's very cold in this studio. Maybe it warms up if, uh, if someone did do that. Um, the other thing I want to talk about, you said, you said at the end of that podcast, and I don't know if I'm going to put a clip of that in or whether I'm going to make people go and actually listen to the full podca podcast on ads on this dot TV. So I don't know if you will have seen this viewers or not, um, not edited this obviously yet. But you were talking about you, you wish you could have given the advice to yourself earlier on, like to be yourself. A little bit more, I suppose, and especially this is something that's massive for younger actors as well. They feel they've got a kind of, you know, prescribed to a certain model, or you know, they will try and be like other people they see on the TV. Take, you know, for instance, right? How many people, like, you know, want to want to pass you off and you know and go right? Oh yeah, I can do voiceover. You know, what did I say before? Um, what's the name? What's that bird's name? Um, uh, Rachel. <laughs> I'll try and do it. Rachel Adetaji. I mean, it's free. <laughs> 
<laughs> sorry, very sorry, very, very northern. northern. Sorry, What's that, ben? sorry, sorry, Rachel. Very, very talented lady. But um, but yeah, Rachel and the G. I mean, I can't do it. How many people kind of want to try and be you? And they shouldn't be that. They need to be themselves in the voiceover industry. Well, of course, you know, we all stand on the shoulders of giants, don't we? We have to start somewhere, and we are, are, our voices are after all. Everybody's voice is, after all, a product of what they hear and see in, uh, around them. And so uh, your voice is unique to you. My voice is unique to me. Uh, 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 but it's based on the sounds that I've heard. And, and in, the, and in, in the, the time of our living, uh, popular culture will inform how we sound as well. If you listen back to how you sounded, if you, if you have a, an old recording of yourself, I have, I have, yeah. it's horrifying. Yeah. And I've, I've heard stuff I've done 20, 30 years ago. It's embarrassingly bad. But then it was probably okay because my voice sounded in tune with the time. And nowadays my voice is very different to what it was 20 years ago, even 10 years ago, which is why, incidentally, you should always revisit your demos regularly to make sure they're in tune with popular culture and how what people are expecting to hear. Um, and those who don't change their demos or change their voices to reflect the way uh, popular culture is, they, they inevitably fall by the wayside. So, yeah, I think it's important to uh, pay attention to what's going on and listen to what's going on around you. Yeah, definitely. No, I, I agree with that. And I also think um, if you don't listen back to stuff you did 10, 20 years ago and cringe, you probably waited too long, right? You're like, you should look back and be embarrassed. If I look back to episodes, you know, I think this vlog has maybe been good quality, Petch, because Petch has been shooting it since day one. But I could have easily waited, Peter, months and months and months longer than I did to start a vlog, to start podcasting, to go, I'm only going to do it when everything's yeah. right. Um, if you don't, you know, look back on your work and I think are a little bit embarrassed about how, you know, how bad it is compared to how good you are now one you've not improved and two you probably just waited too long so um get out there make stuff happen get over to ats on this.tv get your membership go to ats on this.tv forward slash gravy to find out what me and peter and hugh peter's business partner are doing with voiceover training going to be pushing a lot of uh, gravy for the brain stuff over the next few months going to be doing some exclusive webinars um and we've also got a discount code uh, that you'll find on that page as well to get gravy for the brain cheaper then you would normally be able to get it. Um, do I give them the discount code now or do I make them go over and get involved with the webinar? What do you reckon? Get involved in the webinar. Yeah, it's all on there. Get involved in the webinar. Acts on this.tv forward slash gravy. We're going to be doing these webinars towards the um, end of May. We'll probably just do them like bloody continuously now. I'm going to push these guys. They're just um, decent people selling a quality product like Acts on This. And obviously you can push all of your guys to Acts on This. Job done. Yeah. Um, Peter, right, I've never done this. I'm going to give you... I, oh, there's a catchphrase at the end of the vlog that I'm I'm giving know, it you. It's my catchphrase, right? It's not even a catchphrase. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but I'm gonna I'm gonna let you say because you can just say it really, really great. So um, and before I hand over to Peter, thank you so much for watching. Um, seriously, I hope you found this uh, this useful. We're gonna be back with some more great guests very, very soon on the vlog. Do subscribe, share this with your friends, reach out to Peter. Social media's up on the screen right now. Let him know that you've uh, you've seen this, you've listened to the podcast, and also obviously reach out if we can help you any more. I'd normally do a countdown in 3, 2, 1, Peter. Are you ready? 3, 2, 1. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been great being with you. But for now, it's BFN. Bye for now. Thank you so much for watching this episode. It really would mean the world to me if you would leave a comment telling me what you enjoyed and what you would like to see more of next time. If you want to catch more episodes, head over to facebook.com forward slash watch Ross or youtube.com forward slash watch Ross. Make sure you subscribe and turn your notifications on. I'll be back real soon. Bye for now. Richard Branson, me and saw it out, right? The woman said the coffee machine needed to be cleaned three times before it would dispense coffee. It keeps asking to be cleaned. I've had to have a tea. It's the first time I've ever had a tea. Don't really know what to think about it. Oh, I've got soya milk though. Didn't know I'd pick that up. Um, join Petch. I don't really want to join Petch. Here you are. See what it's like. not the same oh tea it's not the same as coffee um how good is peter dixon what an absolute legend um like i say i mean you'll all recognize that guy's voice such an incredible talent 
massive um and yeah that full podcast you can get yourself over to acts on this dot tv um right now and you'll find it you know available for for members there's 90 minutes you only saw like 20 minutes of it there um we go into real depth on exactly what you need to do to start a career in voiceover and like i said before it's not a, ri- a get rich quick scheme it's not like oh yeah you know you just go from zero to any thousand pounds an hour um you don't that will take you a long time um but within a year like i say it changed my life immeasurably you know completely got me out of my day job and um, so that's on this dot tv as well forward slash gravy um if you go to the website you will see um a little bit of a deal 25% off grade for the brain training for acts on this members. If you're not a member, sign up. You'll find the discount code in the members area. And then at the bottom of that page as well is a little uh, email kind of sign up uh, where you can get notified for when these webinars are coming up. I'm going to be doing some webinars. That webinar called Actors, This Is How You Get Voiceover Work. It's a free online training uh, with Peter um online we're going to be you know doing that one night very very soon within the next couple of weeks so if you go to acts on this tv forward slash gravy um get your premium membership to acts on this get the discount code for gravy for the brain but then you can come and do these free workshops with us um regardless of whether you've got a membership for anything doesn't matter you can still do these free workshops that's on this tv forward slash gravy fill that form in there that says want free voiceover training those listening on the audio experience um, there's a form at the bottom of the page um, on acts on this tv forward slash gravy you will find the uh you'll find a little form there put your email address in and your name and we will drop you a uh, an email of you know you'll get the uh an invite for that before anybody else um so let me have a look i think there's a couple of questions during uh during that let's see what people uh people had written on here jason broderick's in the house all right jason how are you doing donna how are you doing linda's made it as well she says what a voice sorry i may as well listen to the playback uh yeah what a great what a great voice that guy's got chris is here says love to be a voice actor i've got so many voices and a great personality i'll be signing up when i get paid do it chris you will not regret it mate lynn's here as well Dougal joined during that as well um Donna was saying about where, you know, where do you even look for voiceover jobs? So we cover this in the podcast, Donna. There's there's really two ways to get work in the voiceover industry. It's very similar to the way the acting industry works. So one, um, you will probably start off without an agent. I was very lucky. I entered the industry 15 years ago when there was nowhere near as much competition. Um, I got an agent straight away because, it, again, it was it, there was quite a bit of right place, right time involved there. Um, my agent's general northern voice was emigrating to Canada just at the same time as I was looking for an agent. So we kind of, I filled the gap there. Um, she gave me a three-month probation and that was 15 years ago, still with the same agent today. And God, I owe those those guys my life <laughs> like the amount of work they said my ways uh i would be i'll be lost without them completely and um, you might not be lucky enough to get representation straight away like you wouldn't in the acting industry so there are what they call pay to play websites very similar to things like mandy.com and um, these are things like um, Voices123, um, VoiceBunny, VoiceOvers.com, um, Mandy now, I'm pretty sure they used to have something called um, Voices Pro, which I think is now part of Mandy, like the Mandy Network. Um, and basically what you do is you sign up to these websites. A lot of them are a freemium model, so they're free to join initially, and then you can pay um, a fee. The more you pay, generally, the faster access to jobs you get. And it's a numbers game on these pay-to-play sites. You will have to get a setup at home. Um, to record voiceover in. Don't be completely overwhelmed by technology or the the amount of money you'd have to spend on a setup. You don't have to spend that much at all. The microphone that I'm using to record this, uh, well, to, to go live with this right now, I do a lot of voiceover demos on this. It sounds great. This was a Rode, a Rode podcaster. Rode do a, a better microphone for voiceover than this, though. They would do something called a Rode NT-USB. It's a USB microphone, plugs directly into your computer. Um, really solid, solid microphone. Um, it's also about the room you put it in. Um, if you put a fantastic microphone in a room that's full of hard surfaces, it's very echoey, it's still going to sound shit. Uh, if you put a shit microphone in a room that's been acoustically treated and there is no reflections and there's no echo in there and it all sounds nice and dead, that shit microphone can still sound really good. Um, so you would want to get a combination of a decent microphone um, and some kind of like portable voice booth. You can buy these off Amazon Um inexpensively you're talking like 60 quid or summer a decent microphone 120 quid plug it into your laptop you've got enough to get going there basically um training is critical though like it would be like turning up to a showreel shoot for your for your acting career turning up on set having never acted 
Um, you can't just talk into a microphone and go, right, that's my demo done then. It's very specific things that are required for a demo. Uh, most demos comprise of three pieces of commercial work, um, two pieces of corporate work, and two pieces of documentary work. Um, you would have different variations mixed of those depending on you know what you're submitting for, for which job, etc. It can get quite specific, specific. This is stuff we're all going to be covering, though, on these webinars that I'm doing. And it's covered in massive depth on uh, on Gravy for the Brain as well. Um, so, you know, something that we, we can definitely look at in the future. But that's one way to get work. The other way after that, once you've got a bit of work under your belt, would be to go through an agent. Then you've got your voice reels. Your agent submits all your voice reels for various jobs and they just phone you when you've got a job. So simple. Very rarely you'll have to do a voiceover demo for a specific job. So my agent might email me and say, Ross, could you just do a custom demo? I had to do it for this pet commercial I'm recording tomorrow. Um, I had to rap as a dog. Um, <laughs> to some like rap music um, can't say anything more about it but I'm literally sat here where I'm sat right now rapping into this microphone mixing it together um, sending it off and then sometimes they'll come back and say right can you do it a little bit differently um, and then I got the job from that two demos took me I don't know 30 minutes and like I say, you know, it's worth what it, what it would have took five months in my old job to, you know, to, to earn so when you get proficient at stuff, don't be overwhelmed by the technology either. It's freaking easy, right? A lot of people want to argue for their limitations and say, oh, I can't do it because I can't use a computer. Just learn. You know what? If you want to get yourself out of the shit job you're in, you want to actually do something good you enjoy, just learn. You have to put a little bit of work in, but it's not that hard. Um, and uh, and then it's just a matter of, yeah, repetition, Donna, over and over and over. On the paper play sites, it's a numbers game. If you can submit 10 demos a day, you're going to get a couple of those. If you submit one demo a day, pointless. You know, you might get lucky once every three months or something like that. It's just a numbers game. Uh, if you've got an agent, obviously, you know, you can get the higher paid stuff and you don't have to, you know, sit in front of your computer all day recording demos. Um, you will still do that now and again, but most of the work is done by your agent. Um, but again, we're going to, you know, we'll cover all of this with, uh, you know, with Peter. Um, there's, uh, there's just so much. There's so much. And on the grave for the brain as well, the... Um, God, like their back catalogue. So when you go on actsonthis.tv, you know I've got basically the back catalogue of stuff. So if you click on uh, what's new, effectively, you know, you can uh, you can go on it. There's Peter. That's what he looks like for those who weren't here at the beginning. You can go on and you can have a look at everything that I've got here. These are some of the biggest like casting directors, actors, directors, agents, producers in the country. And you can just scroll through basically all of these different features. You can also search for stuff as well. Here we've got different categories. So these are the live broadcast re uh, replays. These are the podcast replays. These are the video interview replays. Um, when Gravy for the Brain works the same way. You just, uh, that's me with a gun. What's that all about? Um, Gravy for the Brain, yeah, works the same way. You just go back through all of their back catalog. There is so much training on there. And you just do it in your own time. Um, you know, from home with your microphone. They also do some like online mentoring as well. Um, where they get people on a live call and you all help each other. Um, you know, you would deliver your voiceover on the live call. You all critique each other, um, direct each other. You know, obviously that's how people uh, how people improve. Again, that's on this TV forward slash gravy. All the information there about how you can get gravy for the brain cheaper. Just click on that link there. It says membership to Peter's site, gravy for the brain. Um, you'll go over to gravy for the brain. But if you want to get the discount, it's in the members area on that's on this. Click on members, click into your premium membership. Right down the bottom, you'll see Atsim Resources and Discounts. And at the bottom there, you'll see it says Save on VoiceOver Training with Gravy for the Brain. So that's ultimately how you get your Ats on This membership for free because the discount you get would cover the cost of your Ats on This membership. Um, so yeah, we're going to be doing a lot of talk about VoiceOver over the next couple of months. Hope you've enjoyed tonight. If you've got any questions, what time are we on now? Nine minutes. Let's do some little bit of Q&A. If you've got any other questions on VoiceOver that you want to know about, let's just cover those now for you. There's there's not a lot I don't know we're doing it 15 years um there's a uh there's a lot a lot I can tell you Bobby says uh, I suppose in Ireland it's different um no mate I don't think honestly the paper play sites are gonna be exactly the same no geographical boundaries there whatsoever um there's gonna be different agents in Ireland but I'm sure you know there's a voiceover industry in Ireland mate uh 100 there definitely is but if you're paying on the paper play sites the internet is basically you know, just eradicated all geographical boundaries. You're just submitting demos to people who put who put briefs on there anywhere in the world. You get someone from America going, right, I want a British voice to do this. You can still apply for that, Bobby. So, um, you know, that's uh, that's absolutely not a problem. Um, 
definitely. Uh, Jason says, argue for their limitations. I love that. People do, Jason, man. They are, so many people argue for their own limitations. Oh, it won't work because of because I'm this or I'm not this or I haven't got this. Stop like arguing for your own limitations because all the other actors in your competition around you are doing that for you anyway. Like, just focus on, like, what you can do. And really, if you put your mind to it, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Um, Great for the brains. Brilliant, says Wendy. Nice one, Wendy. Uh, then it says, Ross, where have you gone? I'm here, Linda. Am I still here? Did did you lose me for any, for, a, for a second? Hopefully. Oh, maybe maybe my connection's going a bit. It's going a bit weird, isn't it? I just noticed on Facebook my connect. Yeah, hopefully I'm back. Um definitely that's just facebook service for you that fingers crossed that's all that's all sorted now um i can apply for british agencies while living here um you for voiceover you can bobby because you can you can join any studio in the world from anywhere you are in the world so i've recorded in manchester at a studio in manchester and, and a new york studio is connected to us and they've recorded my voiceover in new york i did a lot of stuff for lucas aid that's how we did it i did a do you know what i did a bingo website once in spain <laughs> and they just dialed into the studio um yeah the internet really has opened up all geographical boundaries mate so um if there's a studio near you anywhere where you are i think you're dublin aren't you are you south southern ireland um uh, there will be then you can still work mate from from that studio you can work effectively you know virtually in any other studio in the world um so it's definitely worth you know exploring um Donna says, literally starting from scratch. So what you would do, Donna, to begin with, um, if you're starting from scratch, it's definitely get some training. Like, you know, without a doubt, like I say, it would be to, to try and, well, you'd be wasting money getting a voice demo done, you know, voice reel done if you've never done this before. It's absolutely pointless. So you would go um, get some training from something like Gravy for the Brain. Um, you know, I'm sure there are other, I don't know of that many other like training companies out there, to be honest, UK based anyway, there's nothing. I think it's just great for the brain. They are the leaders though, without a doubt. And they, they teach in all different areas of the voiceover industry from commercial to corporate, to documentary, to gaming, to audio books, everything. Um, and you would practice and practice by, to begin with, you know what, if you don't want to spend any money on kit, cause you don't know it's for you, just practice by getting under a duvet with your iPhone and reading adverts. You can find scripts online. You can just transcribe stuff from the TV. You gotta really think about where your voice would fit in the industry. And particularly for commercials, your voice generally fits in uh, line with the products you use you know so that's that's it, there's a real tendency now for commercial uh, voiceover to become conversational a lot of the time and they want the voiceover to sound like the person who will be using the end product so the end so the end user like relates to that voiceover so um it's quite rare like peter said to have a voiceover where you know everything is like this you know it's just not it's not like that anymore um so you would go right okay what products do i use as me you know, what websites do I use? You know, what hair stuff do I use? What makeup stuff do I use? And go, right, okay, what are their adverts like? Transcribe some of their adverts. Practice, you know, repeating their adverts back. Um, practice delivering, you know, text as if it was to the same text, but to seven different audiences. How would this sound if I delivered this to a group of school kids? How would I sound if I had to deliver this to, you know, some medical students or some businessmen? How would this sound if I was, you know, delivering this to, you know, some OAPs? You know, it's going to be really different that your delivery, you've got to think about who you're delivering this, you know, this message to, what reaction you want from those people. Um, you know, that's going to then uh, affect the pace of your read, the musicality of your read, your tonality, how fast, you know, you, you, you read that. There's a lot of things going to the technique. And then it's a matter of, uh, yeah, practice, 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 practice. Then going, right, okay, I figured out kind of where I fit in the industry. I'm going to find seven pieces for my reel. I'm going to create a reel. And then I would go, there's probably only four or five places in the UK who really do in, in, incredible, insane quality, you know, bespoke voice reels. Don't go to a one-stop shop who are like, oh, I'm going to give you all your scripts yourself. We'll record it for you. We'll send it out there. It's bullshit. So many people are going to try and rip you off, take money off you, hundreds of pounds to give you the same voice reel they've given to 30 other actors who have come to them. My agent gets really pissed off when she receives the same voice reel she's just heard two days before it's from a different actor but they've all gone to this one-stop shop and they've all got the same piece of shit um you've got to really look at where you fit and source your own scripts or get help sourcing your scripts that is critical um in you know creating a decent voice reel that's bespoke to you that people haven't heard before uh, from that point you would you know 
apply for paid work either on the pay-to-play pay sites or look for an agent. And then from there, it's a matter of building up trust and your network within the industry with, you know, studio engineers who will put you forward for stuff as well. You know, I've made so so many great contacts with engineers because I've gone in and done a good job. And they're like, you know what? You know, I get a message. There's a guy, Dean, in a, in a studio in, in Manchester. He's like, mate, you know, he messaged me on Facebook. Just put you forward for this Man United job. That's, he's not my agent. But because we work well together and we know each other years, this is how the industry works. It's all about relationships, nurturing those, adding value. You know, when when a when I find an engineer I love to work with and an engineer finds a voiceover they love to work with, like it makes your life easier and the job easier. So you look out for each other because you know it's going to be a really good record. You'll get it done in super quick time and you'll get out and you go and you know live your life. Um, so it's about then nurturing yeah those relationships. Um, it's just an amazing industry, honestly. And if you actually dedicate yourself to it, it can change your life. 100%. I'm not saying for everybody this is exactly what's going to happen because a lot of people... I can show you... This is what I've realized, right? Running acts on this.tv. I can show you how to book work as an actor, how to have a decent TV career, how to have a decent voiceover career. I can show you it all. And my guests on actsonthis.tv literally talk and walk you through exactly what you need to do to have success in this industry. Do you know what the sad thing is though? I'm not saying anyone here this applies to, but honest to God, for 90, 95% of people, they don't take the action required to actually you know, get the result that they want. I can show you all this stuff, but I can guarantee you nothing because it's down to you. I can't make you do it. You know, The website's called Act On This, right? I'm going to give you what this is. I'm going to give you this information and show you how you can change your life um, and how you can have a lot more success in this industry. I can't guarantee you anything because the rest of it's down to you. And unfortunately, it's the same with gym memberships, isn't it? We know a staggering 72% of people on average who buy a gym membership never go to the gym. So I don't know how many people have got an act on this .tv membership and they've got access to the biggest casting directors in the industry. I mean, people literally like, it makes me laugh so much. If you go on the website and you just have a look at the uh, at the members area, let's just go at the members area for a sec and we'll just have a look at the casting directors that are in it. These are like an hour and a half podcast. If we click into podcasts and we just have a look at the casting directors that are in here. Okay, we've got Emma Stafford. I mean, there's obviously actors and voiceover artists in here and directors and stuff, but um, there's so many podcasts in here. So Emma Stafford casts um, stuff like the 4 O'Clock Club for the BBC. She casts, uh, uh, casts Stella, you know, with Ruth Jones. Big TV projects. Um, we've got, I mean, these are just great directors. We've got Andy Pryor. He casts Doctor Who. He just cast Years and Years for BBC One. He's just cast a brand new drama called Traces. He casts like the biggest stuff in the industry. We've got Jill Trevelyan cast out an Abbey. Um, loads of other stuff, but Downton Abbey's, you know, obviously a huge, huge show. Uh, we've got Kate Rose James. She casts... Um, uh, oh God, she cast like Bodyguard, she cast Line of Duty. Um, they're just some of the podcasts. If we go into the live broadcast replays in here, we've got Hollyoaks casting director Peter Hunt. We've got Victor Jenkins, he casts things like Humans, Broadchurch. We've got Daniel Edwards here, he casts Line of Duty as well. Um, but lots of other stuff, some massive Netflix dramas. We've got Dan Hubbard, you know, fam incredibly famous casting family, the Hubbards, cast everything um, from some of the biggest films like Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, The Born Identity, all those kind of films. Uh, right now it's a top TV drama. Um, we've got people from Coronation Street, Casualty. We've got Mrs. Brown's Boys casting director, Nikki Bly. She casts a lot of like really top comedy. All these people who people will be like, you know, these are, these are 90 minute chats with these basically telling you how you can get in the room with them. Actors are like, oh my God, like I'm not getting any auditions. I would love to, you know, get in front of Jill Trevelyk or, you know, I'd love to be seen by Andy Pryor for all these dramas he's casting. I'm like, well, you know what? If you just listen to the podcast, he tells you how you get in the room with him. This is all information that I've used in my own career. And I've just shot years and years. It comes out on the 14th of May, by the way. Please watch it. I'm in episodes five and six. I just did a podcast today with Lydia West, who stars in Years and Years as a character called Bethany. You'll know what Years and Years is from next Tuesday when it comes out. Um, this is all stuff that I've just just implemented in my own career. Right? I didn't know any of this stuff before I interviewed the casting directors. I've implemented it in my own career, working a lot, saving voiceover, because um, I'm acting on it. So you can go and listen to all this stuff and I can show you how to do it, but I can't guarantee you anything because you've got to actually do the work. Same in voiceover. Look at it as not something you do on the side. Look at it as something that isn't like a second string to your bow. It's a first string to my bow, same as acting. 
Um, and if you do that, you can't help but get decent, you know, decent results. Um, Jason's got to go. Keep up the good work. Inspiration. So thank you, Jason, mate. Hope you are good. David says, how do you market yourself to stand out to agents, casting artists for voiceover in a market that seems bloated with talent and well-established voiceover artists? Um, you would be surprised, David, how much work is in the voiceover industry. It's estimated to be worth $4.4 billion, Right. I don't know in my own career, in my own circle, of really, I mean, I don't really know that many solid, decent voiceover artists who are churning stuff out day in and day out and really working on their craft all the time. You know how you stand out by like work, outworking people? It's the one thing that levels everyone in this industry, right? You can be born with attributes that make you more you know, uh, I guess suitable for certain areas of the industry. Um, just same in life for everything, you know, but you can outwork people. The one thing that you can do is put more effort in, put more hours in. When I do a voiceover demo, David, right, this rapping dog voiceover demo that I did for a job that I'm doing tomorrow, I know it sounds mental, but um, it's, a big, it's a big job. And my voiceover agent, agent sent a request out for custom demos. I know... I don't know, say there was 10 of us up for that job. I know I'd say eight out of the others wouldn't have put the effort in that I put in for that demo. So I found some music online, some royalty free rap, like a beat. And I, because I've taught myself over the years, no one's taught me. I've just, I've just basically, you know, Googled it, watched video tutorials on how you record yourself, techniques for making your voice sound better with plugins and EQ and, you know, um, ultimately like processing you can do on a computer and um, to make yourself sound as good as possible. Um, I lay down that track underneath. I practice that rap, you know, for a good 30 minutes. Then I lay down a couple um, of options. So I'm not just giving them one option. I'm like, you know what? We could do it like this or we could do it like this. Send those off. My agent gets feedback like, Ross, they love it. But you know what? They want it a little more like this. I do them another demo. I'm like, look, whatever you need at any time. It's 11 o'clock at night and you need a demo and you need to do it differently for your client. Let me know. I will do it anytime you want. Um, a week goes by. I think, oh, I've lost it. Job's not there. They ask for one more demo, give them one more demo. I send it off and then I'm like, no, you know what, David? It's not right. I've just realized this isn't right. I record another demo. I send it. I'm like, I'm so sorry. Discard that demo you've just got because I think I've just probably lost myself the job. Here's what I think it should have been. Give them this second version of it. They're like, mate, you've got the job. Um, so it's just out working people. That's the way you stand out is by offering like the world to these people and going, look, whatever you need at any time, day or night, I'm there and I'm going to put in that extra effort. I'm not just going to record my demo, you know, on my on my iPhone in the car. You know, if I have to, you know, I'm going to do what it takes to get home or get to a studio where I can lay that down properly because that job's worth, you know, f five grand. Why would I not put the effort in? If I, you know, and this is two hours. I'm working 10 till 12 tomorrow. And um, and these, some of these jobs can be worth twenty five grand. You know, somebody last year I know did the a, a very famous car commercial for a um, for a car insurance company. Um, she's done sixty eight grand in a year for that commercial because they keep making record more and more and doing more and more buyouts. Um, what are you going to do for sixty eight grand? What are you prepared to do to get that job? Um, a lot of people aren't aren't prepared to put the effort in, mate. So you've just got to hustle your ass off and make connections with people, do such a good job, do jobs for free occasionally as well. The amount of time I'm at the, at the end of a session at a, a studio and they're like, Ross, could you just um, stay behind for 10 minutes, mate? We're recording a test for this company. And you know what? If you if you give us the demo for free uh, and you just stay for 10 minutes, if they go for it and say, yeah, we want it, you've got a really good chance of being the voice that they will want because you've done the demo. I've earned thousands of pounds doing that. And there's all these all these actors knocking around going, oh, you know, how entitled are they? How good do they think they are? I don't do anything for free. I'm not giving my services for free. Does a plumber give his services for free? Oh, you know, would a uh, you know would an electrician give their services for free? It's fuck off, right? There's not a million plumbers out there who are looking for a job, you know, and they probably don't enjoy plumbing as much as you enjoy voiceover or acting. So you know what? If you've got to do something for 10 minutes for free, do something for 10 minutes for free. Pick your battles wisely, but stop being so entitled because the world owes you jack shit. Like, there's a lot of entitlement in this industry that I just wish people would get over. Um, you've just got to, yeah, man, just put that extra effort in, David, mate. And honestly, um, but, any, you know, anyone in here as well, um, if you want any help, like genuinely, um, email me, ross at .tv. If you want me to listen to your demo or you're putting a demo together or you're recording something on your phone, I'll give you like super honest feedback. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Like, it's just no point. Um, I can tell you very specifically what you're doing right or wrong. Um, 
I'm more than, you know, more, more than happy to do that. Uh, personally, I feel hungry, determined to jump through hoops to be successful. You've got to, Donna. Honestly, you just got to just put in more work than other people. You know, Will Smith, didn't he? He said, he said hard work, you know, beats talent when talent isn't working hard. You've got to have some talent. I mean, you know, without a doubt, you've got to be talented in this. And the one way to get talent and develop your talent is by practice, repetition, more and more and more. Like I say, this isn't certainly like, you know, just, just decide you're going to do voiceover and there you go. It's not the case. You really have to put some effort in. But yeah, you know, you can work. You might do your nine till five day job and you go home and normally you'd watch Netflix, you know, from five till nine. Just put four hours in of recording voiceover demos, listening back, doing it again, getting better, practicing how to use software, buying a new microphone instead of going out and spending 100 quid getting pissed at the weekend. Um, you know, you just put, put in the effort. But instead, I think deciding where to have your voice reel made is one of the greatest preliminary challenges. It's expensive and easy to waste money. Bernard, mate, 100%, man. And I genuinely think there's four or five places in the UK who do these properly. Um, if you want um, advice on voice reels, anybody, um, hit me up. I can give you a list of, you know, the people who I would trust in this industry. And you are talking a lot of money, right? But not as much as it would be really to get a showreel shot. Showreel shoots are roughly 300 quid a scene. Actors just do them willy-nilly, not a problem. And then someone says, right, your voiceover reel's 500 quid. I'm like, ooh, no, that's a bit expensive. It's not, you know, I earn three times as much doing voiceover as I do acting in a year. Um, and I work a lot in both. So like 500 quid's nothing for a decent voiceover reel. Really isn't. You, but you've, you're right. You're dead right, Bernard, mate. You've got to choose wisely of who you go with. Uh, the only gym I know is Jimmy works at the McDonald's. <laughs> does, does, uh, Donna, get yourself in the gym. Not, not, not McDonald's. Um, you'll, you'll live longer, definitely. All right, Jay Jr. Hope you're good, mate. Thank you, Linda. Um, really appreciate your being here. Uh, thanks so much for the answer, Ross. Really appreciate that. We'll definitely give you an email of some of it. Oh, David, anytime, buddy. Honestly, anytime you want. And it goes for anybody. Like genuinely, I'm just legit and really mean it. When I say it to people, you know, I want to help you. Genuinely, I do. Not not just saying it. I don't want anything from you. I don't want any money. You know, what would mean the world to me is if people signed up for acts on this, join the community. It's two pound fifty a week. You know, I'm not I'm certainly not going to you know be making any money out of that just helps me run the site and bring great people to you, helps me widen my own network and just meet lovely people and want to have a nice life, basically. So, you know, if anyone does anything for me, that that's what you can do. Um, but I don't expect it. I think the value speaks for itself. And I think if I, well, I would, if I was an actor, I think people should. Um, but yeah, you know, it's not a prerequisite. Anyone can email me I'll, I, and ask anyone who's emailed me. I always email back. It might take me seven days, 10 days, but I'll always email people back. Um, reach out on social media, hit me up on Twitter, uh, Instagram or do whatever I can to help people there is enough success out there for us all not a lot of people operate from that place because they're fucking stupid but there really is the more you give the more you get genuinely um, so I hope this has been useful for you um, at on this TV forward slash gravy go check out the page fill it in get on the list for the webinars that me and Peter are going to be doing we're we'll talking a lot more about voiceover in the next few months um, remember if you are a member of actsonlist.tv get that uh, discount code for Gravy for the Brain from your members area it's in there right now there's a link you've got to click to go over to Gravy for the Brain put your discount code in at the checkout and you're going to get that 25% off the membership um, and just let me know yeah like if you do do that please let me know tweet us tweet uh, me and Peter as well if you've uh, listened to the full podcast uh, that's on actsonlist.tv right now like I say you'll find that in the watch news section it's right at the top there how to land voiceover work with voice of the x factor peter dixon if you're not a member of acts on this you can listen to a little preview of the podcast there as well but if you want access to the full 90 minutes and all of the juicy details then you're going to need a, uh, a premium membership um so cheers for uh for tuning in tonight like really appreciate you if people are watching on the replay massive uh, massive shout out to you as well dawn says very useful advice as always ross thank you dawn allison says he's legit Gave me great advice on a new scene for my showreel. Thanks, Alison. Yeah, you email, emailed me about your showreel, didn't I? Um, I always email people about it. It's just the right thing to do, isn't it? Why would, why would I say email me if I'm not going to actually uh, reply? Um, so do let me know if I can, uh, if I can help anybody else. Um, I'm just going to close the comments down on uh, Facebook, I'm afraid, guys, just so I can end this uh, broadcast. Um, oh, what's going on here? Maybe I'm not, actually. Maybe I'm just making it up. Uh, <laughs> let's see if I can uh, close this down. Um, is anybody there? Yeah, there you go. Right, okay, I need to get on. Facebook needs to sort this out. I can't get onto the page where I need to end this broadcast without like 
going through a load of menus and stuff like that, uh, which is a little bit crazy. I um, hope everyone has a fantastic week. It's only Monday. Obviously, it's bank holiday. We're all going to be confused about what day it is this week. Um, but yeah, just do do something this week, every day, one thing a day to get yourself further in your career. Reach out to somebody, research something, sign up for those webinars, um, You know, get a membership at on List, listen to some podcasts. Um, just just every single day. This industry is all... The progress you're going to make in this industry is not predicated on uh, the big decisions you make. It's based on the small decisions that you make every single day. They compound. It's like compound interest. You want to you want to earn a lot of money. Utilize compound interest. You know, invest in stuff where you're going to gain interest, and then that interest is going to compound and compound. If you can, you know, make a decent decision each day to do one thing that's going to take you further to your goal. Thirty days later, you know, it's going to change the game for you as opposed to going, oh, I'll just do one big thing a month. Bullshit. Just do the little things. It makes it breaks it down. It's a lot easier. Um, so yeah, send that email, reach out to somebody, record a demo, buy a microphone, you know, go to an acting class, whatever it is you need to do and, um, drop me a line, you know, if I can, uh, if I can help you with, uh, with anything else. And so thank you so much for being here. Those on the replay, your legends, please subscribe on iTunes. Just search for ads on this TV or one word. You'll get the audio from all of these Monday night live broadcasts, hundreds of them on iTunes and Spotify as well on SoundCloud, um, on Stitcher depending on where you get your podcasts from. Um, search for Ats on This TV, all one word. Come and join the Facebook group, facebook.com forward slash groups, forward slash Ats on This TV. Um, and yeah, just just join the community, man. I like, would love to have you a part of it, Ats on This TV, get your premium membership. Until next time, thank you so much for being here. Have an amazing week, everybody. Love to you all. Bye for now. 